tap into the psychology of engagement and more. This is where we talk about life, learning, and everything in between. This is the Lifelong Podcast, a show for those of you who love to ask why. Because we're marketers, it's because we're coaches, it's because we're change makers. Each week, we dive into the big questions and explore the psychology of engagement with strategies, tactics, and special guests along the way. Now, here's your guide, the visibility hacking queen herself, Coach Molly. Hey, visibility hackers, and welcome back to this episode of the Lifelong Podcast. I'm your host, Coach Molly from visibilityhacking.com, and it's an absolute pleasure to spend this time with you guys today. This season on the Lifelong Podcast, we're diving into the psychology of engagement. In other words, psychology for marketers. So I hope you'll get a lot of value out of this season's episodes. Today, we're going to dive back into the world of psychology and sociology and look at the uh, at a hierarchy that I think you guys have probably heard about a few times before. So let's dive into it, shall we? Today we're talking about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And this is a concept that we hear a lot about. Oops. And this is a concept we hear a lot about when we're talking about our human needs to feel safe in order to thrive as a species. But we can also understand this concept in this hierarchy when it comes to learning and to community. And so I'm going to break this down today and show you how you can implement this strategy in your own courses, in your programs, and most importantly, in your communities. So let's get started. This whole thing was started by this handsome guy in his mustache. This is Abraham Maslow. And he was studying what it takes in order for organisms to thrive and whether or not we can divide those needs into a hierarchy and which ones will need to, which of those needs will need to fulfill first in order to move on to accomplishing higher rungs in the hierarchy. And the first base level of Maslow's hierarchy is physiological needs. So how does this apply if you are teaching something or you're a, you're marketing something or you're an online course designer or you're speaking from a stage? They The first thing you need to understand is if you do not meet the physiological needs of your people, they will not get anything out of your teaching. They will be completely, your time will be wasted, their time will be wasted, and also your people will be uncomfortable. So the first thing I need you to understand when you are designing these experiences is to make sure you're meeting the physiological needs of your people. And what does that look like? Well, it looks like having water breaks or creating shorter content so that people can go to the bathroom if they need to. They can have little snacks along the side. You can have music playing as well. We talk about emotional framing when we talk about uh, creating our live shows, right? And that has to do with setting the right music so that we're in the right frame of mind for what we are about to uh, about to learn. So if we can control that very basic aspect of our learning experiences that we create, then we're going to have significantly more success. The next level up on our hierarchy is the is the level of safety, and this is where we want our our people to feel like they're okay, to stop with the fight or flight feeling, to stop feeling like they have to fit in appropriately and that they have to mold to a certain criteria in order to be part of the community. A lot of times when we're learning things, we bring up past trauma that may have happened when we were in school, when we were in a more formalized learning situation. And now that we're adults, we're actually carrying that unnecessary baggage along with us to new learning experiences. And I know in my own life, I've experienced this as well. When I was going to Funnel Hacking Live um, a year or so ago, I remember feeling nervous. I remember feeling like I just wanted to stay in my hotel room and watch from the window as everyone entered the conference room. I didn't want to be there. I felt like I was unsafe. I didn't know what was going on. But I pushed myself past that barrier because I knew that if once I got there, once I knew that I could experience what safety was, then I'd be able to move on to the next level of the hierarchy. 
So when you're designing these experiences, create moments for affirmations or create statements and literally say it out loud that you know and you trust in your students that they're able to accomplish this. You know that they are in the right place. This also, you can ease this tension by also providing schedules or a syllabus for your students so that they can follow along on the progress. Maybe you're a parent and you've gone on a road trip with your kids before and within a few minutes of leaving the house, we get kicks on the back of our chair and our kids going, are we there yet? But when we're able to follow along the route and we know that we're not yet there, but we're almost there, we can see how far we are. We can check that progress. We ease that tension. We give that sense of safety to our students and we allow them to then move higher up on the hierarchy. Also, creating bonding activities may sound super cheesy and a lot of people think it's a waste of time, but what it's doing is it's meeting that need. It's helping your people feel, experiment with this new environment and recognize that they are in fact safe. These people are, that they're in, in class with, their cohort, or the other people at the conference, they're not going to bite their heads off. Instead, they're actually part of this experience together. Bonding activities can also be broken down into smaller categories, one of which are my favorite icebreaker activities. Those are icebreakers and de-inhibitizer activities are designed specifically to get us out of the thinking part of our brain, to get us to stop with the signals that are flying off, trying to make us feel safe, looking for all of the things that may attack us or hurt us, and instead calming that brain, letting it breathe, and letting it just have fun. And so actually implementing those types of activities into your programs is going, you're going to see a huge change in your students. And I promise you icebreakers are not easy to get everyone to participate in, but they are incredibly powerful once you're able to accomplish that. So try it. If it doesn't work, keep trying it because I know that you have the ability to make this difference in your students' lives. It just takes that shift in their mentality and the easiest way to make that shift is to get them out of that thinking part of their brain and into a little bit of laughter, into the ability to th think freely and to just be and get out of that, get out of that thinking brain. <laughs> the next level up in the hierarchy is that space of belonging. We as humans are constantly looking to belong to something or somewhere. So the way that you can start to meet this need in your programs is to create project-based learning, for example. Give your students a place where they can come together and work on actually accomplishing a task, creating something that wasn't there before, where they can take ownership of that experience and they know that it was their team that was able to help them accomplish that. Another thing that you could do is have classroom discussions where they're not, your students are not just passively watching you on video, but instead they're you're creating opportunities for that cross communication, for your students to talk to each other rather than just sitting passively and listening to you, the attractive character. Once we build that cross communication is when our community really starts to deepen those relationships and really starts to move the needle towards legacy. A third thing you can do is celebrate your students' wins. At the end of every module, celebrate what they have been able to accomplish. Highlight your students who are doing incredible things. Le put them up on that pedestal and show the rest of your students that this is an example to follow. We like, we as humans love to have things that we can model, love to have frameworks that we can follow, love to have experts in front of us whose paths we can follow. So when you position yourself as the attractive character and you create a system that allows for your students who are shining to be positioned as those role models as well, it does two things. It gives confidence to those students who you are celebrating, but it also sets the example for the students who may be struggling, who may be wondering how this fits into their world, or it may be able to reignite the motivation for students who have maybe dropped out or off of your program. This is going to keep your brand at top of mind for people as well. It's an incredible thing, but we forget to sometimes meet that need. And if we're not meeting the need of belonging, we can't get to the next level, which is esteem. 
Esteem is so important to think about. Esteem is our sense of self. We know that we belong. We know that we feel safe. We know that we're not going to die. But now we need to have that sense of individuality, that individual success. We can't always rely on group projects, right? We have to give individual spotlights to our people. And so we can do this in a variety of ways. I recommend creating badges throughout your program, something that your students can reach each rung of the ladder and achieve something. Another thing you can do is at the end of your program, have a graduation ceremony and celebrate each of those individual students and what they've been able to accomplish. This is also going to achieve much of what we talked about when we talked about celebrating your students. It's going to reignite motivation in students. It's going to set the example for students. It's going to also raise that esteem in the students that we're able to accomplish. And it will also create that new group of graduates, that new community in which your students belong to or they strive to belong to. Also, highlight your students. Do more student case studies, not just in your graduation ceremony, but have it as part of your content machine. Celebrate the work of your people. The next level up is the level of self-actualization. This is usually the top of Maslow's hierarchy of needs. This is as, as high up on the hierarchy as he got with his research. And this is where we start to talk about how do we actually transform the world around us? How do I fit in to that greater community? And we can do this by having activities like reflective journals. It's, there's no mark associated. It's not a right answer or a wrong answer. It's instead a space to reflect and to think and to make those connections in our brain and to allow the information we've just taken on to settle in deeper and deeper into deeper parts of our brain as well. So we stop thinking and we can start acting automatically. We also look at creating community projects and ha inspiring your people to give back to the community at large. This can be the community of your students, but it's incredible when you're able to inspire your people to make changes to the community at their fingertips. The communities in their homes, the communities in their towns or cities, and the community in their nations at large. Because when we start having that kind of an impact, locally having those ripples around us, we can create tsunamis globally. We can make total, huge, drastic changes as a collective of inspired individuals. I know that sounds wild, but that's the kind of thinking we want to have. And we can put that kind of thinking by incorporating journaling activities as well, giving our people space to have those dreams and create action plans to make them happen. It's all about having your focus on impact. How do we make the world a better place? Which leads into my addition to Maslow's hierarchy, which is this very top section, which I'm calling beyond. This is about legacy. This is about what I call cycling up. We'll talk more about this in another training in the Visibility Vault. So if you're not already signed up for the vault, I highly recommend you do because you'll want to hear this training. It's about what is the next step? What, how can you not only be inspired to create change, be empowered with the tools you need to make that change, but then how do you do it in a way that's going to last for generations? Generations after you are gone, that is cycling up. That is how we really create drastic tsunamis of change. And we do this by first understanding the most basic level of comfort for our people and understanding if we don't meet these needs in the right order, then we're not going to have the kind of lasting success and impact that we really need in this world. And I know that you are capable of doing. So please, Start using this framework, start using this hierarchy in your own programs, in your own courses, and in your communities so that your people are able to achieve the greatness that is deep within them, that the world needs. We are starving for the greatness that your students hold inside of them, and it's your job to help them unlock that. And it's like a crazy puzzle. You have to do it step by step by step, but if you do it in the right order, you will see incredible changes in the world. And that's on you guys. I can't wait to see what you guys do. 
I'm Coach Molly from visibilityhacking.com. This has been another episode of the Lifelong Podcast, Psychology of Engagement, Psychology for Marketers. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Make sure if you're listening on your favorite podcast platforms, like us, subscribe, give us a rating, share us with a friend. And if you're watching in video format, hi, <laughs> leave us a comment in the comment section, like us, subscribe on our YouTube page. But most importantly, share this with someone you think will get some value out of it. Because if we can share this with people who are going to change the world, imagine the ripple effect we can have together. Mm. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. It's an absolute pleasure to spend this time with you. I will see you in our next episode. Until then, remember I love you and be excellent to each other. <laughs>